Hi, and welcome to the Changing Perspectives podcast, the show where we discuss a variety of topics including grief, parenting, health and wellness, and relationships. Join us and explore a number of changing perspectives. We're your hosts, Jenny and Josh Brennan. Hi, Jenny. Hi. How are you today? I'm nervous. You're nervous. I am. It's okay to be nervous. But why don't you tell everybody why you're nervous? So this is episode four, Mm -hmm. and episode one was an intro. Episode two and three were grief, which is my wheelhouse, and I don't have to get too vulnerable or personal for those, although we certainly did talk about lots of personal things. But today, we wanted to actually tap into the variety piece of our show description, where and, and talk about something that's well, not the, grief related. And the relationship piece. And the relationship piece, right. yes. So our podcast, as we're moving through all of our episodes, will not always center on grief and loss and end of life. I think probably the majority of them will, but there will also be uh, segments, episodes, episodes that... Yes, you'll get it. I am a podcast newbie. Right. Like, like I don't listen to podcasts a lot. Um, There will be episodes where we talk about relationships, where we talk about parenting, where we talk about health and wellness and sort of self-care. So today we're talking about relationships and we're talking about something that comes up for me pretty often in my clinical sessions with my patients. But it requires you and I to be honest and to share some things with the listening public. And I don't know them. Okay. And I think this is, you mentioned self-care in relationship. This is a little bit of both, Mm. I think, right? I think it's self-care for relationships. Right. Yeah. Um, Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So whether I'm seeing couples or I'm seeing families or I'm seeing individuals who are in relationships, at some point in our work together, communication comes up communication challenges come up and I find myself recommending or encouraging folks to take this little quiz. And every time I do it, I kind of feel like I'm back in high school doing like a Cosmo (laughs) quiz. So you and I went to high school together. Did I ever make you take like a Cosmo quiz with me? Yes. Do you really remember that? I don't remember specific ones, but yes. You remember like... I actually remember being, I don't know, at the beach or at the pool or something in the summer sitting... And the sun getting burned, because that's what I do in the sun, mm-hmm. um, and filling filling these up with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the first time I saw this, this felt to me like a, like a okay, it's just a fun little Cosmo quiz. But I've actually found it to be really helpful and pretty authentic. And when I, I guess, prescribe it or encourage folks to use it, it's all about process. And I think this is my preschool teacher coming out. It's about process, not product. And so I had the idea that you and I would do this quiz and sort of kind of model what you're supposed to do with it. Right. And it requires that you and I are going to share some stuff um, with each other and with our audience. So it's a little bit different. So hopefully everyone can bear with us and maybe learn something and, and perhaps utilize this in your relationship as well. Right. And I think um, being real and honest is applicable in multiple situations. We talked a lot about that in some of the previous episodes about pet loss and um, how to prepare children for wakes and funerals, being real and being honest. And that's very applicable in this situation, too, right. with each other right. in relationships. So let's dive in. So okay. this is the five. Are you sure you're ready? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> So this is the five love languages test. So some of you may have heard this referred to in pop culture. You know, this has been shared on Facebook and Instagram. Um, The five love languages sort of series was developed by Dr. Gary Chapman. This is just one piece of those series. But I think it's important because essentially what it does is it allows a couple to find out where their communication breaks down because often couples come to a relationship and they show their their partner love in a way that they want to feel loved. Mm. And sometimes that doesn't match up. And I honestly don't know what our test is going to reveal today. I don't know if it's going to show up that we're doing a good job or if we're not doing a good job. We're going to find out. But that's the idea. The idea is that there's five love languages. There is words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, 
acts of service, and physical touch. So Dr. Chapman believes that people express and feel love based on these five categories and that people will sort of inherently have one or two or three areas that really kind of mean more to them than the others. And that can impact your relationship. So say, for example, I um, receive, well, let's let's hold that off. So that's sort of a teaser because we'll talk about application after we find out our answers. So it's a series of 30 questions. And each question asks you to choose between one of two statements that most applies to you. So you take this test with your partner individually, and then you kind of add up your answers and have a discussion about that. So we have taken this taken this individually. We have taken this individually. We have not shared responses. We have not shared our responses, mm-hmm. and we've tallied you tallied yours up, right? Yes, okay. I have. I have tallies. So we have tallied them up, so we know individually what our love languages are, and then we'll kind of share those. So what we're going to do is we're going to read through the statements, we're going to share what we answered, and then move on to the next question. Not really have a lot of discussion around those questions, but just to show you guys what the questions are like. Right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So number one, I like to receive notes of affirmation from you, or I like it when you hug me. So my answer was, I like it when you hug me. That's Oh, well, that was mine, too. Do, okay. we have, do we say the letter? It's an E. I guess no? for if people are scoring along at home, the, these are going to be... You can certainly pull up the test. And you could, because I'm going to put the link in the show notes. Um, so the, the letters are either A, B, C, D, or E. And, they and those re- represent the five Love languages, languages. yes. So that is an E. Um, so that indicates physical touch is important. Okay, we can't spend this much time on every question or we'll be here forever. Okay. Okay, so number two, I like to spend one-on-one time with you or I feel loved when you give me practical help. Okay, so for me, I did B, which is I like to spend one-on-one time with you. I chose the same thing. You did? Yeah, so we're matching, but that's that's Okay. The goal is not, there is right. no goal. It's process, not product here. Well, we're winning though, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are jiving so far on two, but it's okay not to jive. That's the whole point of this is to understand each other's language. Correct. Yes, right. that's true. All right. So number three, I like it when you give me gifts or I like taking long walks with you. So I went with B for that one, which is I like taking long, long walks with you. Yes, I also chose that. I had a hard time with this one, though, because we don't take long walks. I thought of like... I know. I thought that must I'd be like nice. To. Yes, it must be nice right. to have time to take long walks. Okay. Um, number four, I feel loved when you do things to help me, or I feel loved when you hug or touch me. Uh, for me, I went with E. I knew you would. <laughs> I feel loved when you hug or touch me. And I did not. I went with D. You feel loved when you do things to help me? No, when you do things to help me. Oh, right. right. <laughs> well, I just read it as is. But okay. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Not so surprising, So now we're right? not jiving. No. It, but that's okay. It's not, a, it's not about jiving. So far, though, none of your answers have surprised me. Have they surprised you about me? Um, No. Okay. Actually, no. Okay. Number, we're on number five, right? Yes. Okay. I feel loved when you hold me in your arms. Some of these are a little cheesy. No offense, Dr. Chapman. I want to sing a lot of these. They just sound like song lyrics. Oh, I don't sing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, actually, that I have a song in my head now. Um, so <laughs> I feel loved when you hold me in your arms, or I feel loved when I receive a gift from you. I went with E, which is I feel loved when you hold me in your arms. Yes. Same. Okay. I don't think either of us holds each other, each other in the arms. Gonna say, but I, I don't need I you to it hold like a me. Hug. Yeah. Yeah. Six. I like to go places with you or I like to hold hands with you. So for me, uh I I went with B. Um Absolutely, I like to go places with you. That's a that's important for me. I like traveling with you. Yes. Did you go with B? No, I wrote E. No, you didn't. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I knew that. I went with B. It'll be tricky. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't think we've reminded folks. If you haven't listened to episode one, we are married. Did we say that? I don't think we said that in this episode. No. Uh, we are married podcasters. 
um, healthcare and human service professionals who have been together since we were in high school, high school sweethearts, 25 years. Yes, that's a true story. Just a reminder. That was a little <clears throat> plug reminder. I like that. If you want to know more about us and why we're doing a podcast and where we, why we think we have information to share, go ahead and listen to episode one. Episode one. Introducing intro, Changing yeah. Perspectives. Okay. Number seven. I feel loved when you acknowledge me or visible symbol of love, like gifts, are very important to me. So I went, I'd struggled with this a little bit. Hmm. The visible symbols threw me off. I just visualized something holding up a sign. <laughs> <laughs> but I went with, I feel loved when you acknowledge me. I did too. Okay. So so at the end of this, what might come out is that Josh and I have the same love languages. Right. I don't know. We'll find out. It's certainly seeming that way right now. It's exciting. Um, or not. Yes. Well, to me, it's exciting. It doesn't necessarily mean that you, you communicate well, though. That's not true. you. Not you personally. Like you right. generally. Um, number eight, I like to sit close to you, or I like it when you tell me that I am attractive. D did you think of Biggie too on that one? No. No? No. Oh, I thought of a Biggie song. Why? I like it when you... I love it when you call <laughs> yeah. it. Do you... No. I don't finish that. We can't pay for that. <laughs> uh, I like to sit close to you. That's E. Yes. Same for me. Yes. Uh, number nine, I like to spend time with you, or I like to receive little gifts from you. So, I'm not a big gift person for me to receive them. So, a lot of these, I don't know, I'll let the spoiler alert, I don't know, if I, I didn't really pick a lot of these with the gifts. Um, so, for this one, we are on nine, right? Mm -hmm. I like to spend time with you. That's B. Same. I'm mm -hmm. the same. Um, yeah, we're, I guess we're not big gift givers or receivers or receivers but let's hold that and we can talk yes. about that when we talk okay. at the end um number 10 i know you love me when you help me or your words of acceptance are important to me that's this one was a tough one for me too i had to define i think about what what help meant to me um so i went with but that was more meaningful so i went with d i know you love me when you help me I also chose that. I don't think I put as much thought into these. Oh. Okay. <laughs> no, now I'm feeling like I did it wrong. Um, I appreciate the time that you took, the effort oh, you put you. into it. Um, number 11. I like to be together when we do things. At, or I like the kind words you say to me. Which is a little weird because if we're doing things, how are we not together? But I guess it would be like that show we were watching where like a couple mm. was together at the same event, but not, not together. together. Okay. So that's probably what that means. Right. I think a lot of couples spend their weddings like that, right? Yeah. Some, you know, either one might be. Careful. Don't judge. Okay. I'm not judging anyone. I'm just saying a lot of the time it's like, oh, I haven't seen you in an hour because I was oh, right. making the rounds and saying hi to this relative and that friend and that relative. And, oh, I forgot you were here kind of thing. But, so those people are probably looked at as more gracious and kind than we were at our wedding because we decided to be together we, the, whole, yeah. <laughs> the whole night. Uh, where are we? 11? Yes. Uh, B, I like to be together when we do things. Same. Okay. Number 12, I feel whole. When we hug, uh, W-H-O-L-E, or what you do affects me more than what you say. So I went with E. I feel whole when we hug. I did not. Hmm. I think this is the second one we didn't match I up on. wouldn't have expected you to match me on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would guess that you went with D. So you're alluding to the fact that it sounds like you probably know my love language like you know for me what what you can do that will make me feel loved yeah I, did i say that i think i kind of well that after that 25 before. years i think i'd be pretty fluent and no Jenny, no right? a lot of couples aren't like a lot of couples not for lack of trying but just miss you know they just think that well you know hugging is how you show love mm -hmm. and that means that's how they show love. That's how, you know, they receive love, but that doesn't mean that that's how their partner does. Right. So you could be together 50 years and still disconnect 
until you really stop and think about this. Think right. about the language. It's kind of like languages. You know, some languages just don't translate fully from mm -hmm. one to another. You really have to sit down and think about it. So right. I, I don't think it's about how long we've been together. I think it's about um, maybe about the fact that we did this test probably seven years ago. Do you remember? Yes. You don't. <laughs> no, I don't remember. It might have been longer than that. Okay. All right. I lost our place. I mean, I I, I speak enough Jenny to get by. <laughs> like, I can order at a restaurant. That's a little yes. shout out to a, a comedian bit, Brian Regan. Anyway. Okay. All right. So we're on number 13. I value yes. your praise and try to avoid your criticism. Or several inexpensive gifts mean more to me than one large expensive gift. I did not like this one. So I didn't either. And now that I'm reading it again, I don't know that I agree with my answer. I don't like this question. So no offense again, Dr. Chapman. Yes. No offense. Chap. Is that, can we call him chap? Sure. So listen, chap, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't try to avoid your criticism at all. And, I, you're my number one sort of, um, <laughs> critic. No, I mean, critic's not the right word critic. Well, yeah, but in a constructive <laughs> way, I mean, I, you're a soundboard for me. I bounce ideas off you. I often will send you emails, drafts before I right, send right, it, right. you know, right. So I, I, I don't try to avoid your criticism. So I went with C, several inexpensive gifts me more to me than one large expensive gift. So that's interesting. I had the same thought process that I don't, I don't like criticism and I have a really hard time with it, but in, in general, but avoiding it to me feels like not being honest. So you may have just heard our other dog in the background yawn. If so, I apologize. Clearly she's bored by this topic today. Very bored. Um, but I struggle with that too. Right. Um, I think it's actually because it says two things. I struggle with that. I yes. value your praise. If it was just that, I would have chosen that. It's the and try to avoid your criticism that threw me off. So I also went with C. Several inexpensive gifts mean more to me than one large expensive gift. But not really. But gifts, yeah. But I think right. compared to this one, that's what this test does. It basically, you know, every question sort of pits one love language against another mm -hmm. and then after the series of doing that 30 times, you're going to see which love language you most closely align with or love languages. I also, I mean, I look at that, that second one, see about the inexpensive gifts and think, right. I don't need a very expensive, whatever gigantic gesture gift wise, mm -hmm. um, something, you know, whatever, something simple. Um, just knowing that you're thinking, about right. giving me a gift is fine. Right. Right. Number 14. I feel closer to you when you touch me, or I feel close when we are talking or doing something together. You, you said that one kind of like we shouldn't have, we should have an E rating. You said that kind of sultry. So sorry. I, I was a little nervous about that. That's okay. Um, I went with B. I feel close when we are talking or doing something together. I did too. Yeah, like together. And I think right. this this is an important piece for a lot of couples and a lot of friends. I mean, like if we sit and we we take a poll of any room at a given time filled with people, probably some of them, most of them are going to be on their phone. So I think a lot of right. couples have fallen into the trap of, oh, we're together. We sit and we watch you know, TV together at night, but really you're not watching the TV well, show together. Scrolling Facebook. You're scrolling kind of mindlessly through social media mm -hmm. and there's not that same level of connection. Um, so like earlier today, when we sat and we watched that show that we referenced earlier, yep. we were not scrolling on our phones cause we were watching it on our phone yep. together. And so actually I was thinking about that when I answered oh, that really? question. Mm -hmm. Well, right. let me just shout out oh, sorry. that we, um, we're doing something together and talking because we're doing a podcast together. Oh, that's true. So mm -hmm. we're, we're meeting that. Mm -hmm. We're speaking each other's love language right now. Wow. That We can just end it right here. <laughs> I would people, drop my mic, but they're kind of expensive. So I have a feeling that. people are shutting it off right about now. <laughs> okay. They're like, bring on the grief and the death. This is, this is weird. Can you please talk about dead pets again? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, 15. I like you to compliment my achievements, or I know you love me when you do things for me that you don't enjoy doing. So I went, that's the one I went with, D. I think, um, <laughs> but some might say that this is something you don't want to be doing. I think you're enjoying doing podcasts, but you didn't at first. You were a little apprehensive. So. I was a lot apprehensive. Right. But I think that, no, that that's a good one. That rings true for me. Mm -hmm. um, seeing you do something that you might not enjoy, but you're doing it just because you know that I enjoy it. Right. So we're halfway through the questionnaire. So for those of you at home kind of following along, the intent is so that you could see, oh, maybe this is something I should do with my partner. I'm going to go home and print it out and we're going to we're going to both take it and then we're going to talk about our answers and we're going to, you know, sort of have a dialogue like we're having. Maybe it will see things that surprise us about each other or see things that really um, affirm what we already know about our partners. The point is that it's about kind of an activity to do together. Okay. Okay. Number 16. I like for you to touch me when you walk by, or I like when you listen to me sympathetically. So for 16, this one, I struggled a little bit. I think both are important to me, uh, but I did go with E. I like for you to touch me when you walk by. Oh, I don't do that. Um, I also put that. I'm surprised that I put that. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I think I might want to change it now. So you're saying you need to take um, Josh language again in college? Or yeah. Take my, <laughs> figure out how to speak me? Yes. Um, no. So when I think about it, I'm not surprised. But I don't. I Well, we'll have this conversation later. Okay. All right. So 17. I really enjoy receiving gifts from you. Or, I feel loved when you help me with my home projects. Hmm. So, neither is really true for me. Um, I don't know. I interpret home projects for things like projects around the house, you know, yard cleanup or installing something. Or, um, And you can help me if you want. Sure. But the doesn't mean that that for me is not a defi definition of feeling in love. So I chose so that one. If you're like out weeding an area where snakes might be in the yard and I'm not going to help you with that, but I come out and do it, you're not going to think like, oh, this means she loves me. I think I would be pleasantly surprised and happy that you're out there because like doing things with you, as we yes, said yes, okay. earlier. But um, I definitely... The really enjoy receiving gifts from you is, is not something I connect with. So out of, I guess I had to choose one. So I went with D. Um, I also went with D. So I'm glad you sort of said that because what this question, well, all of the questions sort of pit one act, one love language against another. You have to prioritize. Yeah, you have to prioritize. So I'm going to guess that these two love languages are probably lowest on your list. It's pitting, um, looking at my key here, it's pitting receiving gifts and acts of service against each other. And so you right. probably don't care that much about either of them. You know, well, they're you not that important. I'm waiting. End. I'm just, I'm, I'm hypothesizing. Yes. Um, all right. So 18, right? Yes. Uh, I like when you compliment my appearance or I feel loved when you take the time to understand my feelings. Um, A is something I do not connect with. So I went with B, which is I feel loved when you take the time to understand my feelings. Same. Okay. 19. I feel secure when you are touching me or your acts of service make me feel loved. I am weirded out by the term, by the term acts, acts of, of service. service. Yeah. Um, but I, so I went with E. I feel secure when you're touching me. The way I always interpret acts of service is like loading the dishwasher, folding the okay. laundry, vacuuming the house, you know, stuff like that. Which one did you go with? I went with... I feel secure when you are touching me. Okay. I know that. See, that's a little surprising. See, there's a, a moment surprising. where you're like, that's not the one I thought you would have chosen. Right. Um, it's the secure piece that was there. Okay. Okay. I appreciate, so number 20, I appreciate the many things you do for me, or I like receiving gifts that you make. So again, this one, I struggle with a little bit. Because um, I don't make things. Well, 
What? Oh, gifts that you make. Yeah, I don't make things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crafty. Well, yeah, I went with, that's not why, <laughs> but I went with D. I appreciate the many things you do for me. Um, yes. I mean, I think that I, and I look at that as not just for me, but for our family. Mm. Um, I think, uh, you know, parents have parent couples who are married with kids and run a family really are reliant on each other. Um, and you are, um, somebody that has a lot on your shoulders and I certainly appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that too. You, you were saying something about the family piece and I'm pretty sure that Dr. Chapman also has a similar test for families, for chap. love languages. Good old chap. Good old chap. I think he has a family one too. Ooh. I've never taken that one. So I will, I'll research it. And when we do our show notes, I will, if the, if it does exist, I will also include it in there. If it doesn't exist, get on that chap. <laughs> What number are we on? I lost my place. Um, oh, oh, 21. 21, I think. I really enjoy the feeling I get when you give me your undivided attention, or I really enjoy the feeling I get when you do some act of service for me. So as you can probably guess, um, I went with the first one, B, I really enjoy the feeling I get when you give me your undivided attention. Yes, same. I think that goes back to I enjoy talking and doing things with you. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, similar. It's from the same love language category there. 22. I feel loved when you celebrate my birthday with a gift, or I feel loved when you celebrate my birthday with meaningful words, written or spoken. So I don't know why I went with C on this one, but I did. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'll just go with it because I filled this out and... Okay. That's where you were at that that given time. I selected, see, I feel loved when you celebrate my birthday with a gift. So it sounds like gifts are not that important to you, but maybe on a bigger event, like a birthday, maybe they are. Mm -hmm. Um, There wasn't an option of traveling to a beach. (laughs) I would have have selected that one. Uh, I chose A. Okay. Number 23. I feel, sorry, A, we have this in front of us. I chose A, which is the second one. I feel loved when you celebrate my birthday with meaningful words right. spoken or written. So again, this the the letters here for each question refer to the specific type of love language, not A and B. A is the first one. B is the second one. A is words of affirmation. B is quality time. C is receiving gifts. D is acts of service. And E is physical touch. Okay. Right. That was your little PSA. little reminder. A little reminder. 23. I feel loved when you help me out with my chores or I know you are thinking of me when you give me a gift. So this one, I went with D. I feel loved when you help me out with my chores. Uh, This is similar to the one up above with help me with home projects. Um, I just didn't connect with give me a gift. So I went with the chores one. Same. 24. I appreciate it when you remember special days with a gift or I appreciate it when you list Listen patiently and don't interrupt me. So I went with B. I appreciate when you listen patiently and don't interrupt me. What did you go with? The same. The same. Mm. I don't speak that language all that much. I need to do a better job at that because I interrupt you a fair amount. You do. We talked about, I think, the last episode that I cut you off a lot. You do. And then you, you retell the story I'm about to tell. Right. Often you do it better than me, though. So I think this will be a you just good did it right now. practice. No, I wasn't. I didn't cut you off. I think this will be a good. This format will be a good practice for me to not do that. Okay. Right, because it's not good radio for me to cut you off and retell the same story that you're trying to tell. Hmm. We'll see if you do it. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. We're almost there, folks. Hang on. How long have this? How long have we been doing this for? Um, just about 29 minutes or All right. so. So this is yeah. like a 30, 45 minute acti- activity for couples. Right. Well, most of them won't be recording a podcast while no, they're but, doing it. But it would be helpful to share their, I think, the reasons talk for why they answer choice. things. Yes, Absolutely. to talk about it. Uh, 25. I enjoy extended trips with you, or I like to know that you are concerned enough to help me with my daily task. So I I try to circle B like a hundred times because that's super fun and something that's really important to us. So I I selected B. I enjoy extended 
trips with you. Perfect. Me too. 26. All right. This is the one that makes me uncomfortable. (laughs) Kissing me unexpectedly makes me feel loved or giving me a gift for no occasion makes me feel loved. See what they did there? They pit. They pitted that physical one right up against gifts. Getting, getting a gift, mm-hmm. right. So as we listen to Jenny squirm in her seat before she answers, uh, I went with <laughs> E, kissing me unexpectedly makes me feel loved. I did too. Moving along. 27. <laughs> okay. I like Just to... <laughs> glossing right over that. 27. I like to be told that you appreciate me, or I like for you to look at me when we are talking. So I went with B. I like for you to look at me when we're talking. Um, That's super important to me. I love when we connect and we talk and we share each other's days and talk about whatever is on our minds. Yes, same. Great. 28. Your gifts are always special to me, or I feel loved when you kiss me. Are you you okay? You're a little nervous. A little nervous. So I went with (laughs) E. I feel loved when you kiss me. I did too. 29. I feel loved when you tell me how much you appreciate me, or I feel loved when you enthusiastically do a task I have requested. So I went with, I feel loved when you tell me how much you appreciate me. That's A. Yes, me too. Right. And finally, I need to be hugged by you every day, or I need your words of affirmation daily. This this should be uh, chaps list of love lyrics <laughs> this just reminds me of a love song i went with e i need to be hugged by you every day same you did all right so okay which one moments of truth so you're a drummer do you want to do a little drum roll is no, it I hard to... that i'll mess up the audio okay <laughs> um so remember there's five categories of love language there's words of affirmation quality time receiving gifts acts of service and physical touch. And you could have as many as 30. Um, You had 30 questions. So your total should total up to 30. You could have as many as, well, maybe not as many as 30 in one area. Anyways, 30 points. How are they allocated for you? What was the, at the category that had the most for you? And what was the number? Can we start with the least? Oh, interesting. Sure. Is that okay? I like that. Okay. So I had a tie for the least. Um, I had two, a score of two under a, which is words of affirmation and, um, two under C, which is receiving gifts. Okay. So I'm actually writing that down on mine. So I, what I did is I wrote down my five from sort of top to lowest, and I'm just writing down yours. So they are the same two lowest ones for me. Really? Yes. But gifts, I only had one. Oh, wow. And words of affirmation, I had three. That's because I had that weird birthday one in there. Okay. (laughs) Um, But I'm writing yours down next to mine to see if there's a big difference. You know, maybe our our ordering is the same, but perhaps it's not as strong. Right. These ones, they are pretty much the same. Can I just, the other thing I keep thinking of when we're reading these is Mm -hmm. not song, but a TV. Here comes our first friends reference from. Because we're gigantic friends. Are we allowed to do that on podcast? I think we can. Okay. Yeah. I listen to a few that reference shows all the time, like The Simpsons. I just keep thinking of Joey's wedding speech, giving and receiving, (laughs) just over and over again in my head. That's part of what I'm giggling, I think. Okay. What was number three for you? All right. So number three was D, Acts of Service, which had a score of five. Okay. That was also mine, but mine was seven. So Acts of Service is slightly Mm. more important to me than it is to you in terms of it's how much it sort of equals love and expression of love. That does not surprise me at all. Right. So when you load the dishwasher for me correctly, (laughs) um, that to me... Define correctly. Well, then we could do a whole Mm -hmm. show on that. Right. A whole episode. Let's not. We won't. But that for me means... That you're showing me you love me in a right. way that is more meaningful for me than it is for you if I, I don't know, clean out the cat's box or something. Right. Okay. What was number two for you? Number two was E, um, physical touch, which came in at a score of 10. Okay. So mine was also physical touch, but mine was an eight. 
So kind of flip-flopped there, right? So physical touch for you is more important than it is for me in terms of expressing that meaning, I love you. Right. Okay. So that means that both of us are number one. We did. Sort of the most important way that we communicate or the way we feel love is quality time. Quality time. I had a score of 11. Oh, I did too. 11. All right. So we both really value quality time and, and see that as an expression of love. For each other. Yes. So there is no, we didn't win. So I don't want you to think that we won. I think Josh, we won. I can see that on your face. <laughs> You're like, we matched, we won. That is not the intent of this. The intent of this is to have a conversation and talk about it. And I think, I know you don't remember doing this before, but I feel like we did this before when our kids were little. And um, we, I think it was probably back before we started instituting like regular date nights and actually making time to really be together, to have quality time together. So I wish I had saved our, our previous should've. quiz. Um, so your I love, believe you that we did it. I just don't quite remember. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure that acts of service was the number one for me before. Really? Yeah. You know, when I was like a younger kind of mom, the kids were littler, mm-hmm. life was crazier in a different way. Right. I think that that meant more for me. So your your love language can change over time and yeah. it can change as for your partner over time too. So this isn't something that necessarily you do once and then you, you know, chuck in the trash. It's it's meant to be a tool to spark some conversation, to maybe help you learn something about your partner that you right. didn't know before, to maybe think a little bit more so that when you see you know, the dirty dishes in the sink, you can remember maybe your partner, their number one love language is acts of service. So mm-hmm. if you see that that sink load of dishes, you can think, you know, what's really going to show them that I love them? It's not going over and hugging them right now. It's not telling them how much I love them. Right. It's not giving them a box of chocolates. It's loading the dishwasher. Right. The important thing to remember is that Love languages don't always sync up. So ours do. And and maybe that makes it easier for us. I don't know. I'd they have don't to sync like... up exactly. There's areas that are a little bit more important yeah. for you and more important for me. But if imagine if we were in a relationship where yours were different. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe maybe it was gifts were most important for you. And right. quality time is most important for me, but quality time is least important for you. Right. That's going to create a, a disconnect there. And so partners are really going to have to keep that in mind and think about that. You know, maybe I don't like receiving gifts. Maybe it doesn't mean anything to me, mm-hmm. but maybe for my partner, it means a whole heck of a lot. And for them, it means I love you. Right. And for me, quality time means I love you, but maybe my partner doesn't see quality time as equaling love. So you really have to kind of think about it. So that's sort of my call to action, my encouragement uh, for folks listening today is to think about doing this with your, with your partner, individually going ahead and taking the test. You can print it out and do it. You can have it on your phone and mark it up with the Mm -hmm. markup tool. You could just talk through it and uh, together, but to do this as an activity to see what your love languages are and to see how you can improve your communication with each other and hopefully bring more positivity and more satisfaction to your relationship. It's a, it's a really great exercise to have a conversation. How was that for you? It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Okay. I love, I love talking about us talking about our relationship. I know. And you're a, um, I I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and you've always been a little, guinea pig for me yeah, that's true <laughs> for many years i'm, of, I'm of starting psychoth- to think i'm remembering things from your msw program <laughs> yes. yes my um, social work training psychology training yeah what i wanted to say was in in your sort of debrief um you can sort of brainstorm about what action steps that you want to take so you can speak your partner's love language a little better in some areas. Yeah. Right. Do we have any action steps? I think our action step would be. Well, um, I think I don't vacation. have to do the dishes anymore. <laughs> action service. Oh no, is this pretty backfired. Low. Yes. <laughs> and I think we just significantly reduced our gift budget. I will remember that at Christmas. So right. every Christmas, I try to say, let's not really exchange gifts. Yeah. Let's just do stockings. And every year, it's you that kind of blows that out of the water so i i question your but not for me because i'm not about receiving gifts i'm about giving gifts but giving is not on here that's true so maybe you want to talk with chap about well i guess is there i'll talk i'll give him a call i'm actually glad you said that because the point 
it, it it's an important distinction to make that whatever your love language is, that's usually what you bring to a relationship. Mm-hmm. So if acts of service are how you feel love, then you are instinctively going to go into your relationship and show your love through acts of service. Right. So if that doesn't mean anything to your partner, it's sort of pointless. But by doing this or so exercise like this, mm-hmm. you understand, okay, this is important for my partner to receive. Yes. So it's not really important for me, but they do this all the time. So that's them showing me that they love Exactly. Me. So it's right. not just about, you know, trying to sort of change how you're expressing your love, but mm-hmm. also seeing your partner's actions differently. Okay. They're not just right. hugging me all the time because they're like, just, you know, they can't keep their paws off of me. It's like for them, that's, that's how they're showing love. Right. Um, I don't know many people that would complain about someone doing the dishes too much. Right. I guess I'm questioning my acts of service <laughs> question, answers there. Um, well, let me just be clear. You, you don't have to come outside and fight off snakes with me. Perfect. In the yard. Okay. Good. Thank Good. you. I appreciate that. All right. Anything that I missed there? I don't think so. That was fun. And I encourage everybody to do this um, test or a similar test and just have a conversation. Yeah. So I think I'll, no matter what I did. Look at that. I cut you off again. <laughs> uh, I think no matter what your love language, love, love languages are or what, how you would like to um, feel loved, talking is and sharing is awesome and an amazing <sighs> exercise. Um, true. That's your bias showing. So mm. I think you enjoy it. But for many people, it's very, very hard. And it requires an intense level of vulnerability and yes. a lot of discomfort. You know, I was I was uncomfortable about like that kissing question. Mm-hmm. But for some people, they might feel that level of um, anxiety and discomfort for all of those questions or even right. greater than. So, yes, it can be really hugely beneficial for couples, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's always a fun, awesome process. That's true. So if you start doing this with your partner and you're feeling uncomfortable – Lean into it. I always say that. Lean into that discomfort because it's worth it on the other side to get the information. Right. So it it doesn't have to be fun. It it might not be fun and airy and lighthearted for you. It might be work. Right. It might be kind of exposing some feelings for you. And that's worth talking about with your partner. And at the end of the day, I think you'll be closer. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Do you have anything else for us today? I don't. That was the only fun thing I had for us today. Okay. Thank you for thank you for playing along. I do have other questionnaires, um, not necessarily always related to relationships, but other things that I have have in mind. So, but for this one, I will post the link to yes. the questions in the show notes, and um, also Chapman, Doctor Chapman's other works too. So if you're Shout if you're out really if you're really interested in this and you want to see his other kind of um, love language series items, I will post that in the show notes for you. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, that is going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for listening. Again, you can check out the show notes for today's episode and check out that love language test by Dr. Gary Chapman. Go ahead and follow us on Facebook at Changing Perspectives Podcast or on Instagram at Changing Perspectives Blog. You can also check out our website by going to changingperspectivesblog.com or send us an email to changingpodcast at gmail. Dot com. Go ahead and subscribe or follow the show so you'll never miss an episode. And we will see you next time. Say bye, Jenny. Bye, Jenny. The Changing Perspectives podcast is produced, recorded, and edited by Dizzy Bird Studios, Whitman, Massachusetts. Visit Dizzy Bird Studios on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dizzy Bird Studios.